Okay, hello everybody and welcome to today's session. This is the fourth um, Assessor and Teacher Network. So welcome if you're joining us live and thank you for watching the recording if you are watching the recording today. My name is Helen Scanlon and I'm part of NCFE's Provider Development Team and we're here to talk about moderation in the early years educator and assistant teaching specialisms for the technical qualification. So we'll move into the welcome and introductions and joined today by the sector manager, Janet King. I'm going to let Janet say hello. Hi everyone, um, Janet King. Most of you may have kn may know me by now. So I'm the sector manager for education and early years. Nice to be here. Thanks, Helen. Thank you, Janet. We're also joined by Gemma McGregor. She's the dedicated officer for the education and early years technical qualification. I'll let Gemma say hello as well. Hi, everybody. My name's Gemma again. Some of you might have met me already. If you haven't, it's lovely to see you here this afternoon. I'll be in the background doing some of the more administrative tasks this afternoon, but I hope you really enjoy the session. Thank you. Thanks, Gemma. So as you can see on the screen now, we've got the agenda. We've also got a number of our lovely moderation team here today. So they're going to be running the breakout room sessions and doing some input. Just going to check everybody has their microphone on mute, please, just to minimise the background noise. Be aware, everyone, that this session has been recorded for anybody who can't make the live session. So if you have your camera on, please be aware that you'll be seen on the recording. But when we move into the breakout rooms, you, it's not recorded. So when we have the smaller breakout room sessions where you'll be working collaboratively, sharing ideas and doing activities, you can have your camera on to talk to each other. It's not being recorded. We're going to run through what the provider development support can be for yourselves. We're going to do a review of the findings and do an update from the last session we did like this. There'll be some input on the revised moderation process. Uh, however, there will be another follow up session about how that's going to work in the coming academic year later this term. The breakout rooms activity will be a standardisation task. There'll be time for some questions and discussion. We'll talk about further support and CPD activities and then we'll talk about evaluation for, the, for uh, today's session. So we're about five minutes in now. I'm going to keep going. So welcome to the session if you've just joined us. OK, we're going to start off with a starting poll, as you can see, and I'm going to launch this via Teams and we have large numbers today. So we're just also hoping that it, that it works and the technology doesn't let us down. But we've got um, background activities and, and backup sort of strategies in case it doesn't work. So we're asking for your starting confidence levels in terms of um, where you're at in assessing the um, early years structured observations. So I'm going to open the poll on a scale of one to 10. How confident do you feel in assessing the education and early years T-level structured observations with one being low and 10 being high? If you can see and access the poll, please click on the poll now. But if you can't see or access the poll because of technical settings, please put your number into the chat just so we can capture what is your starting level. One, as I say, being low and 10 being high. And so thank you for the people who are already voting. So we've obviously got some people with some experience that have um, done some assessing. So we've got some higher numbers, which is wonderful to see. But it's also quite acceptable and, and understandable if you're on the lower end of that scale. So one is low, 10 is high please let us know where you feel you are just at the beginning of this session before we really get into the nitty gritty uh, of, of the topic, because we're hoping that this uh, input we're going to do is going to help. I'm just going to need another minute or so, but also just quickly ask again, just to remind everyone to pop their mics on, on mute, please, because it will minimise the, the background noise that we're getting coming through. So, as I say, a reminder just to turn your microphones on the silent, please. OK, I'm going to close the poll now. If, as I say, if you have another chance, please pop them into the chat. And can I ask you there, Gemma or Janet, do we have any numbers in the chat as well as the poll? Or has anyone been able to access the, the poll this afternoon? There are quite a few in the chat and we are ranging from 
one to eight. Brilliant. And we've got one from one to ten in the poll. So brilliant. Thank you. OK, I'm closing that poll and we'll move swiftly on. Okay. Uh, we have another question then for you now, and this is just a, an easy yes or no question. Um, how have you attended one of these assessor network meetings before? I'm going to share this one. And just launch it. So it's just a yes or, yes or no question. Um, please let us know if you've attended it before. We seem to have a lot of going into the. OK, well, Polly's not working, so I'm just going to ask you to put a yes or no into the uh, into the chat. So please let us know, have you attended one of these sessions before? I can't see the chat, so can I just quickly ask, can anyone see the, the chat and let me know that the yeses and noes are coming in? Yes. They are coming in and most people have been on a session like this before, but not everyone. Actually, now that we've got a fuller um, compilation, so to speak, it's probably even Stevens with yes and no's, to be honest, okay. Helen. Brilliant. We're going to have to keep using the chat because, as I say, it looks like the uh, the Polly's not, not playing this afternoon. So the next question rolls on from that one. So if yes, Please share one benefit or the impact attending the net network meeting had either on you or on your students, please. So just very briefly, a couple of words, a, a sentence or two, maybe. Um, please let us know an impact or the benefit that you attending this session created. So we're just trying to capture some of the impact, please. I know people have told Gemma and myself in um, consultation meetings and in, in other sessions that they've found it really useful talking to other assessors from different organisations, helped them to standardise uh, their assessment practice and therefore allowed them to better prepare the students for the structural observations and the moderation process. Janet, is anything coming in that we can share? Yeah, absolutely. So clarity for um, observations and assignments, sharing best practice, um, hints and tips, better understanding of the structured observations, gaining up to date knowledge and the benefit of being able to talk to others and network um, watching some of the previous YouTube um, videos and recordings have given further clarification and just that reassurance that they that they're getting things right so also the networking I think I mentioned that's come up a couple of times so benefit uh, confidence reassurance clarification seem to be the main things and the main features that are coming through which is great absolutely OK, please continue to pop your ideas on. We um, we are going to keep going because time we know is extremely precious for yourselves. OK, so I'm going to briefly talk about the provider development support. First of all, we've got the T-level provider hub, which ha should have everything on it that you'll need to access training, support, etc. You have dedicated account executives who will also look at the business side and support the business side of running the T, the T level, in other words. Uh, providing development, support the teaching and learning and helping you to prepare your students for summative assessment uh, by using formative assessment, obviously. We do curriculum consultations, just like it says on the screen now, and they cover your first two years of delivery, but as I say, that focuses on teaching and learning. But we've also got the dedicated T level support email address. So on the screen now, you can see that email address for support and also the link to a consultation booking request form. And that's where you have a dedicated one to one with Gemma uh, or one of the team or, or some of the team. Sometimes we invite Janet along as well to get some subject specific input related to helping you get the most out of teaching and delivery and assessment of the qualifications so that you feel fully equipped to, to get the best possible outcomes for your students. Uh, we also do other CPD sessions, we do drop-in clinics and we do best practice networks. So please be aware that there's lots we do 
but we rely on your benefit on your input to to make them work and to also inform what we do because we want to know from yourselves what CPD and development that you feel you need. We don't just want to assume anything. So lots of communication with ourselves, please, to to allow us to to provide the, the best levels of support. Any questions or anything, please pop them into the chat. Uh, as I said at the start there, we're not going to be doing a lot on future moderation processes that will be picked up in a, a future uh, session like this. But we're going to be talking about the processes as they are now and to help you feel ready to get your students ready for assessment. On the website, you'll find the assessment materials under the assessment materials tab that's circled on the screen now. It's really important um, that you're fully informed about previous assessments. We're lucky that we're entering year five of this now. So we have lots of chief examiner reports, past papers for both the exams and the ESP, including mark schemes, all the pro formas you and your students are going to need to, to do all of the assessment. Lots of tutor guidance there and also a lot of observation information about the observation criteria. For this bit, I'm going to just quickly dive to, to Janet because Janet's done a lot on the observation criteria and the new OBS criteria. And we're thinking mostly there for the EYE part one competency based. Janet, can you just quickly summarise what kind of support and, and guidance you've already offered in this? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously your students that are now going into their second year in the early years, as educator they're going to be staying with assignment two part one that they started with which is absolutely the right and ethical thing to do and they will have been observed against those and so on and they will also be moderated against those and that goes for assignment two part two as well and i know the moderators are going to talk to you about that the um the webinars and the sessions that have already taken place with regard to the revised um early years educator criteria and um, there are some sessions on that and there's also for your new first years there will be um, assignment to part one revised documentation so um, this year I know and the moderators also are very much aware that it is that sort of tricky um, challenging transition year if you've got both second years and first years but there's there's plenty of advice out there and you can always get in touch Lovely, thank you, Janet. Thanks, Helen. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the support material section on the website where there are various, a good old range of different support materials. Always ensure you're following the most up to date and relevant specification. There's more tutor guidance on there. The GSEMs show you the difference in how to grade certain assessments, and there's also a support handbook on there. So. If you haven't had the chance, please do look at, this, at the website to see all of the different materials that, and, and guidance that's on there. And then finally, we've got the T-level events booking, which we briefly mentioned earlier. We've got a range of free events. Um, I've mentioned the drop-in clinic, CPD sessions and best practice networks, but that's in the T-level event booking, which we can pop into the chat as well so that you can have access to that. Uh, you've probably already used it if you're here today because it's the, the same area of the, the website that you use to, to book onto today's network meeting. Okay, I'm going to hand over for the Chief Moderator report. So I'll just quickly ask who's coming in for this. It's please. me, Jo. Bye. Brilliant. Thanks, Jo. I'll hand over to you. Thank you. So um, some of you might have met me before. I'm Jo Patton. Um, I'm Chief Moderator uh, for Assisting Teaching, um, based down in the southwest of England. So, so most of the southwest providers probably know me, but some of you might not have met me before. Um, what I'm going to do this afternoon is first we'll give you a bit of an overview of the findings from last session. Um, so as moderators, we all feed back each session on um, strengths of providers and areas for development in terms of the criteria where we might be seeing um, students achieving slightly lower marks and what we think those possible possible reasons for that are. So um, first of all, I just want to draw your attention to our chief moderator report. So there is one for both assisting teaching and for early as educator. 
um, and they are on the website and there's going to be links provided for those um, so that you can access those. If you've not already had a read of those, I strongly recommend that you do read them before going into um, assessing your structured observations this year because there's lots of useful information in there. Um, but what I've tried to do is pick out some of the key themes from that report so that I can share with you today. Um, so what we found was across both um, EYE and AT, um, most students were really well prepared for their assessments. Um, so planning was um, done in detail. Students knew what was expected of them in terms of what criteria they were aiming to evidence and how they could evidence that. And that it was evident where students were marking, were achieving lower marks, that a lot of the time it was due to perhaps that lack of pre preparation and planning. Um, so again as with as with previous years planning is really a key aspect of the structured observations um, and helps the students to be really prepared know what's expected of them on the day and perhaps to also think about what they might do if things don't go to plan and what what they might change um, to support them to still achieve the criteria as best as possible um, so we did identify some common themes across providers and, and with students you know right across the country where perhaps um, criteria weren't um, achieving as high as higher marks as some others so um, I've just tried to pick these out a little bit so that I can give you a bit of an explanation of what we find as our common themes um, so early as educator a common um, criteria where we find uh, students didn't get as high marks was S1.30 which is demonstrate flexibility during planned activities to incorporate unplanned opportunities when supporting children's mathematical understanding. Yes, that's a mouthful to say. Um, so what we found was students were losing marks for this criteria when they weren't always recognising the spontaneous opportunities that were there that they could use to support maths. Um, and in particular, what we found was where they were including spontaneous maths, it wasn't always appropriate for the age and stage of development of the children they were with. So um, what we're looking for in order for um, students to achieve the higher marks here is that they are looking to extend maths across a range of concepts and that they are using maths that's at the right stage for the children that they're working with. So um, that's just something to sort of bear in mind in planning um, with your students for, for the next cohort. Um, S3.7 and 3.8, which is plan and lead uh, and facilitate educational activities and play opportunities to meet the needs of all children um, within a range of areas of learning and development, as stated in the early education curriculum. Um, so again, in order to achieve the highest marks for this criteria, um, what we recommend is that assessors should encourage students to use their knowledge of individual children to inform their planning um, and to deliver their activities. So the highest marks were awarded when you could really see that a student had thought about okay what children have I got in today what might their next steps be what am I looking for to try and extend their their next steps um, or their learning and development in a particular way and then could discuss that accordingly as well um, so and it needs to be evident in both the planning and the delivery of the activity so that's um, just something again to consider um, for students that are looking to get those three and four marks is to really think about the children that they are going to be working with on the day. Um, S2.20 um, support children to manage their own behaviour in relation to others. So again, this is a common, I would say a common criteria where um, you don't always see those higher marks being awarded. Um, and we do get a lot of queries about this one because a lot of questions are in relation to, well, if there's not a behaviour management issue to be dealt with how can you award the higher marks so um, some of the advice the advice that um, I would suggest here is to think about again um, students planning activities that will incorporate strategies specifically to help children understand emotions and feelings or strategies specifically to help them to work with each other and um, sort of play alongside each other so it could be something for example like um, recapping at the beginning of an activity what are our expectations today um, or what's our nursery rules or you know something like that just to really then show that they're demonstrating how to support children to behave in relation to others and to get those um, higher marks again awarded so those were some key criteria from EYE 
uh, early as educator and then moving on to assisting teaching. Um, so there, again, there were some common ones that came across uh, and, and as moderators, we noticed across across the team that these were sort of common themes again. So S3.37, um, help, help pupils to choose realistic goals that are challenging but achievable. And also S2.14, which is help pupils develop ownership of their learning and education um, through a student led approach. Both of these criteria rely on um, the student understanding the need to support the pupils to set their targets and think about smart targets so quite often what we were noticing in what we'd observed and what we're hearing in professional discussions is the student was perhaps fairly confident about talking about how the teacher might set a target or how um, they might set a target for a pupil within the class but in order to achieve the higher marks again it's thinking about how they support the pupil to think about setting their own goals and targets as well. Um, so that's just something again to consider um, within planning and that could be something that they could plan and incorporate into their activity um, in order to achieve those higher marks. Uh, S2.17 is extremely similar to S1.30 in EYE. So this is about identifying and using unplanned opportunities to develop mathematical understanding as they arise. And I would say more so in assisting teaching we saw lots of unplanned opportunities for maths, but they weren't always developing and extending the pupils appropriate to their age and stage of development. Um, so students were really good at incorporating some maths into their activity, but it wasn't always at the right um, developmental level um, for the children. So it's thinking about, again, for those higher marks, is it extending their learning and how, how are they going to do that? How can they sort of demonstrate that? So just something else to consider. Uh, and then the last criteria were um, apply pedagogical understanding to deliver and lead small group teaching within clearly defined planned parameters and to foster and encourage effective nurturing and safe environments. I'm not going to read all that. I'll let you have a read of the rest of it. Um, so again, just for these criteria, it was a reminder for assessors to be aware of the circumstances when professional discussion is allowed. So again, um, this was commonly sort of misinterpreted, I would say, in terms of what can what professional discussion can be used for. So I would recommend everybody has a recap on the, the tutor guide of what criteria um, allows for professional discussion and in what circumstances. So for example, um, P professional discussion for one of the criteria is only allowed if the student is not observed working with a group of two to four children so it's thinking about have I already seen that in which case it's been observed and I'll mark based on what's been observed but do but have they say for example worked one-to-one -one, in which case you'd need to ask the student to expand further within their professional discussion um, so they were just some key findings from the chief moderator reports. And as I say, if anyone's not read those yet, please do. And then if you have any further questions after reading those, um, all your moderators will be happy to support with that. Um, that was quite a lot, I realised. Has anyone got any questions on that that they want me to clarify? Are there any questions in the, the chat, Janet? There's nothing coming through the chat at the moment, so Violence. I think it was, um, <laughs> I, I think, very informative and very clear, I've got to say. Um, Thank you, Janet. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's just chat. a few tips to sort of help for next year's, um, for next session um, when you're looking at your structured observations. But as I say, the full documents are available on the website. Lovely. Thank you, Jo. So the next bit is me and I'm sorry, you're going to be sick of my voice by the end of this. Um, so I'm going to the next thing I'm going to do is discuss a little bit about the changes to moderation. So um, just to update everybody. And again, this is all available on the preparing for moderation page on the website. And again, the link will be provided from today so that you can access this and review it in your own time and sort of absorb it, take it all in. Um, but I thought it might be just helpful if we give a bit of an overview of a couple of changes that we've made to our moderation process. Um, and that is for this year only. Um, and I know we have had some questions for next year at the moment. At the moment today, I'm just going to talk about moderation um, processes for, for this, um, for your year two students. Um, so part one um, 
for those of you that have done this before, this is relevant for the early years educator occupational specialism only. Um, so we do, um, we moderate part one um, and as moderators, we will come out and visit to moderate the all of the EYE competency criteria for part one. Um, and this begins from, from now onwards, basically. So the moderation window is open. Um, your moderator will plan to visit to observe the assessment of each of the competency based criteria and discuss their assessment decisions with you. And what we've changed this year is that we would like to, we, our aim is to complete this in one full day's moderation visit. Um, so a number of reasons for this, um, one of which being we, we've responded to feedback that we we do take up a lot of assessors time in terms of the amount of visits that we do year on year. And some of us um, are seeing the same assessors year in, year out and um, are thinking, oh, come on, I've, I've done this. <laughs> um, so we're trying to help reduce your time. Um, and also we have got an increased number of T-level providers on board. So we're managing our time as efficiently as possible as well. Um, so what we'll do in that one full day's visit is we will plan to observe each criteria at least once during the day and this could be across a range of students so um, for example we might observe um, three students in a day and maybe with one or two assessors depending on your team um, and then we will arrange our follow-up team school as we would have done um, last year if any of you have, um, had students last year um, so you will ensure that the observations scheduled for the day of the moderator visit cover all of the competency based criteria and again your moderator will work with you and support you with this so we will likely have a team's call with you first to sort of talk through this in a bit more detail and figure out what works best for you and how we can how we can work with that as well um, and that will be via both observation and professional discussion um, if all criteria were not seen during the visit, we will use the team's call following the visit to have a discussion about those criteria, why they weren't seen, what you would expect to see, what you would expect to see from that criteria. And we would make that competency, we'd make that moderation decision based on those discussions. Um, so the team's call will take place remotely following the visit. Um, and also we will use that visit, uh, that team's call to provide feedback from the visit and from the assessment decisions that we've made. Um, so following the visit, you will receive a moderation report detailing the outcome of the visit and whether there is any actions to take forward. Um, so for those of you that have have done the been through the moderation process before, it is extremely similar to last year. The only difference really being that we're trying to complete in one in one full day visit um, rather than come out several times. Um, so that's the main difference. Um, and for anyone that hasn't experienced um, moderation yet, when you are introduced to your moderator, uh, you will um, be offered a team school to discuss this further and plan it in a bit more detail. So obviously you'll have an opportunity to ask any further questions as well. As well. Yeah. Um, just a reminder, if you haven't been allocated a moderator yet, um, your moderator is only allocated at the point that your students are um, booked onto their schedule of assessment. So once you know which occupational specialism your students are going to be doing, um, it's really important to, to get them booked onto the portal on the schedule of assessment ASAP because then your moderator will be allocated and then we can start making that contact with you to support you with the with the moderation process. Um, and we've got a portal user guide which will obviously talk you through how to do that if you've not done that before as well. So um, if the link's not on the, I think it's on this PowerPoint, but if it's not, we can add it to the chat so that you can access the portal user guide um, for information on how to do that. Okay, sorry, I realise I'm probably talking too fast. Has anyone got any questions about part one moderation? I'm going to let Janet look in the chat, but I'll have a couple of questions that I can, I'd, I'd like to ask on, on providers behalf if that's okay, Joe. Yeah. Will you still need to see every assessor in every provider? Um, it's not essential. Um, it's if we can great but I know some some teams are bigger than others so and if we're coming out for one day it might not be logistically possible so um, again we would probably um, have discussed that in the team school as what what's most appropriate um, and it might be for example if there's a new assessor to the team it would be good to come out and see the new assessor um, so that they could be supported in the process as well yeah brilliant and are, are you expecting to see a number of students in that one day um 
no, because again, this might vary depending on cohort size. Um, we have got some providers with very large cohorts and some with teeny tiny ones. So yes. it will depend. Um, but I would say probably across three students, it's it's mm-hmm. fairly straightforward to work out because the EYE part one criteria can be split in a similar way to the structural observation criteria across mm-hmm. those kind of three different themes of observation. Um, so that's a common way to do it. But again, if providers have their own sort of format for assessing part one, we wouldn't be asking them to rewrite their format or change how they're planning to do things. Um, but we might say, well, in that case, we'll see more students or less, depending on what suits them. Brilliant. So, Janet, is there anything in the in the chat from terms of questions from participants, please? Yes, there's a few questions, and I think some of them have kind of been duplicated in answers and responses. But I'm going to ask them anyway, so that the people who have who have asked them um, can have have a response. So. Somebody asked if feedback, one-to-one feedback with a moderator is possible following their report. I think you made some comment to this, Joe. Yeah, so um, two things. If you had moderation last year, you will have received a final moderation report from your part two structural observation moderation. And we, as moderators, we will be happy to have a Teams call to clarify any points on that report if you've got that and you've got any questions or queries about it. Um, so please contact your moderator from last year if there's any queries relating to that. In terms of um, part one now, moving forward, um, as your report comes through, yeah, as always, if there were any questions or queries following the feedback. So we will always discuss the feedback in our team school that we're going to put onto our report. So you all have had that in advance. So you'll know what's going to be coming on onto your report, especially if there's anything that we're going to recommend in terms of an action. Um, but then if you still have further queries, then, yeah, we could absolutely um, discuss that further. OK, that's great. Thanks, Joe. And a couple more. So, um People have been asking if they if the students can choose the activities and I guess yes to a point in the tutor guide there there is and and we have had a response in the chat from the moderator so thank you but just to give it to the wider audience if you can't access the chat um, if if the students are choosing an activity based on a structured observation is it advisable to actually look at that tutor guidance, look at any options that may have been um, suggested there and to plan accordingly? Yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely. So, there's, there's definitely, there's a range of activities that students can do, especially in relation to the structural observations. Um, and similarly for part one, depending on how providers split their criteria up. Um, yeah. But it might be that, that they're decided in guidance with the assessor or someone within the team so that they can still get the best from it on the day um, and sort of have a, you know, I think it's really important that um, someone within the team can have a look over the plans perhaps beforehand to, you know, guide the student of um, how they might be able to to best um, demonstrate the criteria. Fantastic. And then there is a, there's a couple of questions around the new criteria. Yeah. Um, and I know that those questions are going to be answered and responded to moving forward. So yeah. I, I would ask people to be patient with that. But thank you for raising them. We will take them away and look at them. Um, and just referring back to what we're, we're looking at today, can there be a negotiation on sort of which students are observed with the moderators? Yes. So for part one, yes, that's that's absolutely fine. Um, we can we can take your lead on it as providers. So um, it might be that you know, for example, that you've got a student that isn't ready or it might not be as confident um, as another student and we can take your lead on that um, and be guided by you. We can also look at logistics So, if actually if you've got several students in one setting it might be easier for us to come out and have a have a, a look with those students in terms of um, travel etc. So yes for part one it can. Um, for part two it's not quite as um, 
it's the, the, we we select the sample for part two and I can explain that when we go on to the next slide in terms of how we select that sample um, but there is still a little bit of flexibility in terms of you know logistics and and working out what um, travel and things so I can discuss that a little bit a little bit more if that helps thank you last two I'll do them very quickly then we can move on um if you are assessing on the structured observations of part two, and I'm guessing this has come from an early years side, do does that assessor who's doing part two need to have been moderated on part one? Good question. No, they don't have to have been moderated, but they will need to have been be fully standardised with the team. So um, we will have um, standardisation packs will be available, I believe, um, from next month. Um, so we've got an updated standardisation pack that everybody that's involved in carrying out the structural observations will be required to complete. So that will be the main requirement is that anyone involved in marking or assessing those structure structural ops will have done that. And I would say it's really important as a team to um, to continue that ongoing quality assurance and internal standardisation um, so that any new assessors that come in after part one are fully up to speed with the expectations. Brilliant. And the very last question that we'll take for now is um, thinking about if a student, if all the students have been booked in on their occupational specialism but have not yet received information about a moderator allocation i think you did mention that that's happening at the moment is that right so not to panic yeah, yeah no not not to panic the um allocations have been um coming through over the last couple of weeks so likelihood it is in the next week or so your moderator will be allocated um i would say perhaps if you get a couple of weeks into the future and you still haven't heard anything perhaps get in touch with with um janet or myself and just let us know and we can just double check that that's ready on the system to be and that there's nothing no anomaly there but yeah they are they are coming through thick and fast as we speak so brilliant thank you let's leave the questions uh there for now but i will keep monitoring the chat and, and pop some responses in there thanks joe no problem. Um, so sorry, guys, me again. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about the process. And this bit is a bit different to last year for anyone that's done um, had moderation for last year. So we have updated again our process um, for part two. So these this is for the moderation of the assignment two part two or the structural observations. And this applies to both assisting teaching and early as educator. Um, so as I said before, the um, there is further guidance on this on the website under our preparing for moderation page. What you will need to do when you go onto that page to read more about it is select the early, education and early years specific information because moderate the preparing for moderation page has um, some generic moderation information, but ours is the education and early years specific um, because it is slightly different to other T levels. Um, so just make sure you're selecting that when you have a look at it. Um, so. For, for this year, uh, stage one moderation um, will take place as before between February and May as per the key date schedule. Um, and we will, the sample size is exactly the same as last year, um, but this year we will select our sample and then for a maximum of three of that sample, we will complete face-to-face -face moderation and the remainder of the sample will be moderated remotely. So if you have um, 11 or more students, we would select a sample of six. And that means that for three of those students, we will be coming out to carry out face-to-face -face moderation. And for the remaining three, we will be asking you to send us the documents that you've recorded and we will moderate those remotely. Um, so once your, once your moderator has selected your the sample, we will then work with you to decide which students will be face to face and which students will be moderated remotely. So this is where I was saying there is a bit of flexibility and there is a bit of um, us kind of working with what works for you and what you've got planned. Um, but we would select the, the initial stage one sample and we do that based on um, the main factor will be on rank order. So it will be really important that you pop your rank ordering on for your students. Um, 
it doesn't have to be done yet but nearer the time you would need to um put your rank order onto the schedule of assessment for students and we would look at selecting a range of rank order students so that's something to to consider um i have had questions in the past about how to complete a rank rank ordering and um it is done in a, in a number of ways but what i would personally look at is expected performance within the structural observations and kind of rank in terms of their performance how, how you think the student is going to um achieve in in their structural observations but you could also take into account last year's results um ongoing assessments etc um so the face-to-face -face visits um, will need to be carried out within a two-day window with your moderator. The dates don't need to be consecutive, so they could be any any date agreed between the um, February and May dates, um, but they will need to be completed within two days. Um, so what that means is there's a potential for, if we've got three students and we're potentially seeing two of the three structured observations, that's six observations to be moderated within a two day window. Um, with Early as Educator, we have got the um, option to for one of the students to just see uh, Structure Jobs 3 um, because it's so much larger than the other two. Um, so for one of those three students with Early as Educator, we might just come and see Structure Jobs 3. So in which case it will be five observations over two days. Um, so I realise this is quite a lot of information to take in. So um, I'll explain it as best I can. And then if anyone has any questions, having sort of absorbed the information taken in, we will always be able to sort of discuss this again in our moderation visits. So then for the remainder of the students that will be remote moderated, this is again is a slight change from last year. So we will be um, agreeing which students will be looking at remotely. And then from the date that you carry out the assessment with that student, we will ask for you to submit your documentation within 10 working days. Um, so again, that will be agreed with your moderator. Um, and the only caveat to that is if it's before the end, if you know, if 10 working days actually takes you past the end of the um, assessment window, then it would need to be sooner because we'd need to get the marks on by the end of the assessment window. So again, we will be discussing that with you and agreeing um, the students and the dates of which that documentation will need to be sent to us for remote moderation. Um, the rest of the process is the same as last year. So what happens at the point we put our stage one um, marks on to the portal, you put your marks in. If we're outside of tolerance, we then go on to stage two moderation and we would select further samples and that would be available to you via the portal. Um, as per last year in that you'd have a set amount of time to upload the further samples for us to carry out stage two and possibly stage three moderation um, if we needed to. Um, so I think that's the same as last year and that's going to go onto the portal as per last year. Um, then what happens at the end of that, if the provider mark and the moderator's mark are within tolerance, the provider's mark is applied if the marks are outside of tolerance, we may apply an adjustment to the marks um, in the cohort. Um, and then the third possible option is possibly moderator marks would be taken forward. Um, we will provide a final moderation report on results day with feedback on the areas of good practice and the areas for development. So again, once you've had a read of that, if you had any questions following on from that, your moderator would then be happy to, to have a call with you to clarify anything. So <laughs> I think that's everything. I'm really sorry. I, I know I was waffling a little bit there, but if anyone has any questions that you want me to answer based on that. OK, let's have a look at the at the chat there, Joe. A lot of information, but again, very, very clear. Um, it is just a lot of it, isn't it? Yeah, your, I know. To get your, yeah. head, ar get your head around. Um, the, there is a seeking further clarity, really, of which documentation needs to be sent off within 10 working days right. for okay. remote observation. So yep. um, if you could, if you could please look at that again. And also um, the face to face aspects of the moderation process. OK, so the documents, um, we will share the provider upload checklist with 
all providers. So there will be a checklist um, to confirm all the documents that we require, but it would be the same documents that we would require for um, our stage two and three sampling. So it would be the assessment record, the record of the observation, the record of the professional discussion, the recording of the professional discussion, and the assessor's um, marks and justifications uh, and any associated documentation that's been used to support the marks, for example, a risk assessment or a work product such as a child observation. Um, so it would be everything that would have been expected as per stage two and three last year, but there will be a checklist provided to support providers in knowing what, what we'll require. Um, and sorry, Janet, was there a question about face to face? Oh, yeah, the face to face element of the moderation oh, can process. I just... Yeah, can, so can you? Um, yeah. And does yeah, it all so... happen in year two, Joe? Maybe you could combine those. Yeah, so it does. Um, it's during the structured observation window. So between um, February and the dates in February and May on the, that are on the key date set schedule, this is when our um, part two face to face moderation will take place. Um, and so for three students that we come to see potentially for three students, obviously, if there's a smaller cohort, it might not be three. But um, for those three students, we will basically come and observe alongside the assessor um, and we would then come away and we input our mark based on what we've seen and the assessor would input their mark. So then the, the system looks at whether we're marking in alignment or not. Um, so that's how the moderation takes place and we are more limited in feedback that we would give during this part two um, moderation window. So in part one um, for EYE, it's quite um, a supportive two way process, whereas in part two, we, we are more limited because we're basically just moderating alongside your assessment and then we're submitting our marks to look at the end whether or not we're within tolerance of each other. Um, and okay. yes, yeah, so sorry, there are three three structured observations each student has to complete and we're going to come out and moderate for likelihood is two of those three structured observations. Um, but with EYE, we've got that flexibility to look at just structured obs three. OK, which is the whopper. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, there is a comment about allowing students to know the total marks once all assessments are, um, are marked. So is that still OK? Yeah, so what we suggest is that there is a total mark form on um, on our guidance documents um, and that providers give their students their the marks that they're awarding um, to allow that student an opportunity to appeal against the assessor's decision if they wanted to um, so that they can see their their marks awarded. OK, fantastic. Thank you. And is there a particular format for the sample assessment plan? Uh, for this. Uh, so are we talking about so for an assessment plan for the structured observation for the student? Um, if so, then yes, there are um, there are some. I'm not sure. There's some documents within our um, tutor guides online um, on the website that could be used um, but they don't have to be used so some providers decide to adapt them a bit or add bits to them or um, make something of their own but perhaps using so I would say if it's to do with um, yeah the initial planning forms um, we have some we have some exemplars or examples on our website within the tutor guide that that could be used um, okay. But but actually planning for the students for the structured observations, whilst whilst we do have those performers, they could use their their own. I'm guessing. I'm just yeah. trying to answer a question um, that's in the chat there through yeah. through our conversation. Okay. Um, okay. Let's leave the questions there for now, and I will continue to monitor and and bring them forward. But that's great, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. OK, I'll, I'll take over here now, Jo, if that's OK, and give you a little rest. Uh, we're going to be moving into the, the breakout room activities now. And as you can see, they are standardisation tasks. I'm going to 
pause for a second to see if if we're ready, Gemma, to to put people in or in, or in people in the rooms. Oh, good. Then, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll allow people to to go into the rooms now. I'm going to continue on here just for a little while to explain what's happening to anyone watching the recording. So I'm going to let people move into the rooms, uh, digest what we've what we've said already in the last thirty minutes or so, and um, I'll explain the task. So. We'll see everybody back. What time are we expecting back, Joa Laura? Around 3.50, if that's okay. Just oh, before 3.50. Three yeah, thank you. Brilliant, thanks, Laura. So just while people are moving into the, to the breakout rooms, as I say, the breakout room activities do not get recorded. So I'm just going to briefly explain exactly what it is that they'll, the participants will be doing in the breakout rooms. So there's a moderation task and it's based on this year's moderation and tutor guides. Candidates are going to, so that our participants are going to mark a piece of criteria from the structured observations from an exemplar that um, they've all got access to. We're going to look at the observation narratives that go with these sample observations uh, and ask participants to, to read them and digest them and then discuss them. We're also going to give the marking bands and ask everybody who participates to consider what mark they would give to the criteria and justify uh, the justification that's um, that's available. So when we come back, people are going to be talking about those. I'm going to come to Laura, hopefully, and ask, we're going to do, if it's OK, a uh, two minutes each of feedback on the main points raised. Anything to highlight from the breakout rooms? I'm going to ask the, the moderators to share anything major or anything they'd like to highlight. Please, Laura, are you back in the room? Hi, yeah. I'm back. I'm here. Hi, yeah. So we Thanks, looked Laura. at breakout. We looked at the structure observation three and we looked at which is S4 Two four, but for next year it will be S four two three, which is about undertaking tasks to ensure the prevention and control of infection. So for that there is three marks. So it's just some for some criteria there can be four marks. For some criteria there's only three. So this one was three, and we had um, we were just looking at the observation professional discussion, and yeah. we thought it can be hard sometimes to judge for this. just on a little snippet of information. But um, some gave it a two and some gave it a three and we justified it was a three based on the evidence that was submitted. Um, and we just talked about you might want a little bit more in terms of policies and procedures. Um, but yeah, we, that was the base of our discussion. There was just a little bit about um, about what we needed to evidence and how we evidenced it, just to make sure that there was enough detail in there, because that obviously, um, if it comes to remote moderation, the more detail, the better. And um, we talked about if you can um, record professional discussions and things like that within our group. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank and you. I was going to hopefully go to Joe for an AT summary. Could we have something Hi. from? Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, so we were looking at um, S1.9, S2.9, which is contributing to the assessment process. Um, and this is in each of the structured observations for assisting teaching. So it's a good one to have a look at. Um, we had a good we had a good discussion um, about the, the feedback that the student might give to the class teacher following um, following a lesson. Um, and we talked about the what they would need to what we would be looking to see in in order for four marks to achieve so we agreed that this this particular um example was three marks and we were looking at okay so what what would have made it a four mark and we were saying that um we had a good discussion about seeing some creative ideas from the student on can you hear any, anybody talking for the pupil i've got a feeling some people are having some problems hearing us um I could hear Laura when she was speaking, so I don't know if everybody else can hear. Um, I can hear OK. Can I know hear. that someone okay. came up. Okay. Yeah, just keep going as we Carry are. On. It's been recorded, so. Yeah, yeah lovely. OK, um, so, yeah, we talked about that and we also talked about um, seeing that communication and collaboration with the teacher throughout. So 
within their planning, within their sort of discussions before the lesson, during and after, so that you're seeing that ongoing collaboration and communication with the teacher. So yeah, some really useful discussions took place. Lovely, thank you, Joe. And from the moderators, are there any other highlights, anything else that you would like to share golden nuggets wise? Um, please just come in and, and share. Can I just, um, sorry, oh. sorry, jumping in. Um, just quickly from my group, um, one uh, provider did say that would they be able to um, get the justifications printed of all the different breakout rooms? Because um, it would be really beneficial to look back over the other rooms that they weren't in um, to see the justifications. I didn't know whether that was something that we would be able to do. Yeah, definitely. I can do that yeah. at the end of the session. So I'll send a follow up. So thank Excellent. everybody who's attended and I can do yeah. that. Absolutely. No problem. Excellent. Thanks very much. I think, can I just say for um, we were looking at structured observation one and it was criteria um, 1.29, which talks about pedagogical strategies to support early literacy skills. And quite often the participants were hovering between one and two marks. And I think what, what we do as moderator is question ourselves as to um, why does it deserve a higher mark? And then look at the marking bands and the, the narrative that it says in there. Or have we got enough evidence to be the higher mark? Should it be the lower? So we have a conversation with ourselves. We look at the planning documents. We look at the narrative from the observation and the professional discussion. And if we can't find it in any of those three, then we have to mark down. But we are very conscious of um, giving the, the student as much opportunity as we have, which is why as, as we can, which is why we look at um, their planning, their um, observation and their professional discussion to try and find that information. So we are trying to hit home, um, especially for the new academic year, that planning documents are key. Plan for what you hope to do. We completely understand it isn't always what happens. You might plan for a specific child who doesn't turn up and then you have to have a plan B, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, we had a discussion around um, the differences in the marks. That was that was quite uh, relevant. Lovely, thank you so much. OK, we'll keep moving on because time is pressing. Uh, Laura, I think I'm coming to you for further support information, please. Or is it Joel? Thank you. There was just some further support and links on there that we've added. So I think most things have been covered. But um, yeah, just some helpful links. Brilliant. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. OK, I'm going to hand over to Gemma now for this next section. Hi again, everybody. So you'll see on the slide here, there's just a, a screen grab of our um, YouTube playlist on there. So this is where you can find, if you haven't seen them before, um, the recordings of our previous assessor network. So there's also um, lots of other resources on there that you can um, have a look at at your leisure. So, for example, there's a recording of a best practice network where we chat to one of our sort of early T-level providers about how she has managed the process of observations and how she's planned for those to happen to get the, the greatest success for her students. And she shares some really interesting sort of um, tips, tricks and um, pitfalls she came up against and how she's changed her processes. Um, to support her moving forward. The link's on the bottom of the, the slide there that you can see, but I will pop it in the chat as well um, at the end, just so that everybody can access it. Um, and that's where this recording will appear um, once it's gone through all of our processes and been uploaded it will appear on this um, playlist as well. So if you want to revisit this and watch anything back, then you can do. And for anybody who um, can't attend the event, obviously it will be there for you to share with your colleagues as well if they couldn't be here. OK, and this slide here, there's two QR codes on the screen here. So the first one, um, if you're able to use QR codes and can scan them on your phone, the first one is our upcoming events page. So any events that the provider development team do moving forward for the rest of the academic year, that's where they'll appear. So there are going to be some dedicated sessions for assessors this year. So we had quite a bit of feedback that assessors would really like some sort of individualised support. So we're going to be offering some sessions moving forward. I think the first one's going to be in November and it should be up on that um, event page fairly soon. 
Um, the second QR code is to sign up to the Next Assist in Teaching Forum. Now, I know that one's not been quite working. Sometimes it does and sometimes it takes you through to an error page. So I know that Janet has popped a link in the chat to that and I think she's going to pop it back in again um, if anybody would like to sign up for that um, moving forward. Um, but please do keep an eye on the events page because, as I say, the, the dedicated assessor stuff should be really useful for all of you, regardless of whether you're new. Thanks, Janet. Um, whether you're new to T-Levels this year or whether you've been doing it for a while, um, hopefully there'll be some really good stuff that you can share with each other moving forward. OK, so this is the events page. So when you search and follow that link on the previous page, you'll come up to this page and you'll need to click on education and early years. If you haven't seen this already, so maybe you were invited today through a consultation call with myself or you'd had an email with um, one of the moderation team and you haven't seen this page, this is where you'll find all of our events. So the next Assessor Teacher Network is planned to be on the 12th of November. So the link to register for that hasn't gone live yet, um, but that should be live by the end of next week um, so that you can register for that. Um, there will be more activities hopefully moving forward in the Assessor Network. So we'll be looking at um, feedback from you guys really as to anything you would like to see at these assessor networks moving forward things that you think might be useful for you um, and obviously um, feedback from today's session will hopefully help us plan that one moving forward and lastly here you've probably all seen this page already so this is the qr code for our uh, qualifications page so this is where you'll find all of the documents that we mentioned earlier on in today's session, where we talked about all those assessment and support materials. And you can see there again on screen is the T-level support email address. So I think I just saw Laura mentioning in the chat about um, being assigned a moderator and how to know if your students are booked in on their um, OS assignments moving forward. That's the email address there that you'd need to contact to check that out. And there's just a note on screen there um, from the guys over in the moderation team to say that any specific information regarding the last session or marks and tolerance levels can't be discussed. I don't I know if anyone... Sh shall we bring Janet in just to talk about the student conference as well? Fantastic. Yes. Thanks, Janet. Thank you. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks, Helen. I've just popped a link into the student conference. The student conference, which is equally um impactful for both year one and year two students it's going to look at careers in um early years and education with a host of a wonderful guest speakers so i've popped the link in there it's our 10th student conference so we're hoping that it will be um well attended and it will make a useful induction for first years and also a very useful sort of progression and reflection opportunity for second years too so i hope to see you there thank you Thanks, Janet. Okay, we're going to move back to, to the polls, then just finishing polls, and we've created a, a mentee for, for this next section because of the, the previous polls not working. So as we run through them, I'm going to, to share the screen that shows the mentee results as well. So if you just bear with me a second, I'll get that. But the first question relates to uh, after you've attended the session today now, have your confidence levels changed at all? Um, same, using the same system as, as earlier, the same grades as in one is low and 10 is high. I'm just going to bring that over because people have obviously been able to find it and start to vote. So if you can access the mentee with, with the code that's in the, the chat, uh, the link and the code that's in the chat, please do. If you can't, please pop them into the the chat for, for today's meeting like we did earlier. So um, yes, we'll just leave that open for a little while to give you the opportunity to, to pop your votes in. Janet, is there anything coming into the chat at all? We have just one in the chat at the moment and that, oh, we're a couple in the chat, both at five. I'm hoping really? that's an improvement on, on, on what it was before. Um, but yes, that's all we have in the chat. Excellent. We'll just let that go a bit further and for a bit longer, sorry, and, and let people put it in the chat if they can't use that. So 
around the middle, I think, is where we were earlier. So you yeah. have nobody who wanted two at the moment. Please don't anyone put one or two just because I've said that. But uh, <laughs> we've got plenty of people who are feeling. Sometimes it's just a case of getting through it, isn't it? Um, so going through the process is, is possibly all all you need. Yeah. And um, people that are typing in the chat, it's coming out at five. So I think we've got about five or six people now that have said um, that have said five. And somebody, somebody, thank you, um, has just clarified that it was a two to begin with. So wonderful. <sighs> Excellent. Lovely. So the next question is um, relates to how beneficial you found today's network meeting uh, and your choices are extremely beneficial, very beneficial, quite beneficial or not very. And if you can't do, as I say, the mentee again, please pop your um, answer into into the chat again. But uh, yeah, how beneficial have you found it today? We have responded to feedback in, in allowing that good chunk of time for people to actually talk to each other and, and work together and have some standardisation conversations with people in other providers. We're aware that some assessors are working in isolation. So um, we want to, to give you a, a platform or a forum to be able to talk to each other. And that's that's hopefully what we've managed to do today. So. Excellent. We'll just leave that open for a little bit longer. And I'll come back to Janet for the chat again, please. Yes. So we've got anything from a range of quite to very. Um, so I know that people have found this session beneficial. So wonderful. Some nice feedback in there for, for moderators to, to look at after this session. Brilliant. Thank you. And then our final question before we, we go through the final slides. Um, one thing that you'll do after attending today's meeting, it just, should just be a text box for you to type in in Menti or type in in the chat, please. What will you do um, now you've attended today's meeting, please? It could be book on to the next um, session. It could be use something that you've you've learned today. Uh, in your practice, it could be um, do more moderation or use use what you've used today with with colleagues to to do some standardisation. Uh, Janet, I'm going to pause a second and let you tell us what's coming into the chat, please, as well. Okay, so a wonderful inclusion about reflecting and also discussing with colleagues with, um, around the information. So a lot of collaboration with colleagues and um, advice to look at justifications a little bit more and sharing information learnt to others, looking at the standardisation process. Brilliant, and I think sharing a lot of people quite rightly are seeing that standardisation pack as well, aren't they? Yeah, booking onto sessions, promoting the student conference. So, yeah, so I can't keep up with it. Some, ex <laughs> some, some excellent comments coming in there. Um, and I think people were very, very um, reassured by what moderators have said and also by the opportunity to look at that standardisation in the break rooms. So, yeah, great. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. And what we'll do is we'll collate all of these ideas so that everyone gets to see what everybody planned to do then. So we've been through those polls. Uh, so the last thing to do, I'm going to hand over to, to Gemma to do our final. This is our evaluation or are there any other questions that are coming in that we need to, to pick up still? Thanks, Helen. I'll just mention this and then while people are sort of opening that uh, QR code, if you can get access to it, we could maybe take a few questions as we go. So you'll see on screen there's a QR code there and that's an evaluation form. That's what it takes you to to fill in for today's session. Um, if you have got a moment, we'd really like it if you could leave us some feedback for today. Your insights, as it says, are incredibly valuable. They help us plan and prepare for events moving forward to support you all in the best way that we can and kind of give you the, the opportunity to have a kind of say in what kind of events we do moving forward. So for all, we are planning some more events directed just for you guys as assessors. Um, if you've got any ideas, any suggestions, please do um, pop them into the evaluation um, and we'll... Um, 
definitely feedback and see if we can try and, and, and meet your needs as best as we can. Um, if anybody does have any further questions and they want to pop them in the chat, um, we'll leave that screen open if that's all right, Helen, so people can access that as we answer any sort of remaining questions before we close for the afternoon. Just have a look in the chat and see if we've got anything. If Janet, if you and I look back. And is there anything else anyone would like to share about the discussion that have been taking place in, in the breakout rooms? Is there anything, any other golden nuggets that can be shared? Hi, Helen. I was just going to say as well that the feedback from our breakout room was that the assessors find it really useful having that group standardisation and being able to speak to each other about it. Um, so I think um, if we can incorporate more of that into our future sessions, I think that certainly the feedback from my group was that it was really beneficial. Definitely. Yeah, that's been echoed in, in the chat um, as well, Joe. So, yeah, fantastic opportunity to be able to network and share and clarify and, and so on with the standardisation. I know there was one question, if I may, that was actually in the Q&A rather than the chat, and I didn't want to um, sort of disregard it. So that was around the professional discussions following an observation. So in assignment two, part one, um, I believe it's OK to do the professional discussions as soon as you can after the observation, but that might not take place in, in the early year setting. But for structured observations, they, the professional discussions are part of that grading um, process, so they must take place in situ immediately after the observation. Is, th is that still the case? Yeah, that's correct. And, um, you know, we do we we look at sort of with part one if they do some in situ then students are more prepared for their for the format of their structured observations as well um, but yeah that's correct Janet lovely thank you nothing more in the chat can I just oh. say I've, I've noticed one question from Jill uh, at 1604 she says, could you clarify the release date of the three types of observation for assignment three, part 1A? Not sure it's clear on the key schedules. And I'm not, not sure what Jill is asking because um, we're talking about assignment two and it might just be a typo. So whether Jill's able to clarify or, or unmute and have a chat, if you don't mind, Jill. That sounds like it could be um, assignment three for the OS. Is that? Is that the one that you're referring to? If that could just be clarified in the chat, I can go away and look at that and we can make sure that um, that a response is shared. Yes, Janet, it's assignment three, I think. Thank you. OK. I will find out and I will share that information so that it can be passed on as appropriate. Thanks, Janet. I'm just looking through the chat now. I can't see any other questions that have popped up since we last checked. But I just want to say from, from our point of view, from provider development, um, I will send a follow up email to everyone who's attended today. Um, and I'll include in that anything that we've mentioned in the chat. So I'll reinforce those links so that you'll have them in an email as well in case you can't access them after the meeting's finished. Um, I'll also send the link to the evaluation form in the event you haven't been able to fill it in today. I know technology doesn't always do as we'd like, um, but please do reach out. If you haven't booked a consultation call or your teaching team haven't, um, then they're, they're more than welcome to book a call with me moving forward. And please do just keep in touch. If there's anything that you think of that you need support with from us in provider development, we'd be happy to help. Um, and there's no crazy questions. Um, anything that you need, please just reach out and keep in touch moving forward.